Yeah, so here I am, Masterton, New Zealand. Freaking gorgeous day, and Gene's uh, invited me to fly this uh, Albatross D2. It's uh, pretty cool. I've got a D5A, but uh, this is a little bit different. One of the main things is, you notice here is the, the sides of the fuselage are flat. We're on the D5, they're actually round like that. And uh, the other big difference is, uh, this is, uh, doesn't have a little sesquiplane on it and uh, of course the other ones were a V strutter so this actually has a two spar bottom wing instead of just a one spar bottom wing. Uh, this ought to be a much stronger airplane and uh, probably a little bit easier to rig at some point because you can tweak things out. Uh, of course there's uh, no brakes and uh, this has got a uh, originally built Mercedes engine in it. This engine is actually uh, one of the scratch built ones uh, that they built over time. I loaned Peter three uh, original Mercedes engines. They reverse engineered them. Um, and uh, that's going to be uh, interesting to fly one of the, the only engines I've flown have been original so far. So this will be one of their scratch builds. This radiator here is actually right in the center section. We're on the D5. It's a little bit off to the side. This doesn't have any radiator shutters. It actually just uh, cools like that. And Gene says it runs a little bit cool, so we'll see what uh, that does. And if it's running too cool, like around 60, you're supposed to add some more power, maybe climb a little bit. And uh, here's the man himself, Gene. Uh, what else should I know about this? It's just plain cool. <laughs> it's just plain cool, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, double spar lower wing. Uh, you know, it's got the regular struts. Of course, there's your airspeed indicator up there pretty much you just go by what it feels like and the wind in your face. Of course, it's got a, I have a funny feeling the Germans didn't know much about instrument panels. They put the instrument, one instrument out on the wing, the other instrument's on the tube up there going yeah, to the radiator. Yeah, there's your uh, radiator gauge. That's your airspeed indicator from the cockpit out there. There's your radiator gauge up there sticking out of the pipe. That's a slega milch. Slega milch, huh? <laughs> that sounds like, uh, is that like a Libra milch? <laughs> Anyway, cool. Now this is interesting. Uh, I see screws here, but are, these don't look like the hand-cut nails you did on the D5. No, they're, um, they're original steel screws. That's what they did back in the day as well. Really? So if they had a nail that didn't grab or was proud, they would put screws in, in its place. So that's really? That's exactly what they did. When we researched that airplane that's at Canberra, the original Albatross D5A, we found a whole bunch of screws in it just like this. I'll be darned. That's yeah. pretty cool. This is a little bit different. Yeah, that's the fairing, D5. Uh, some of the airplanes, some of the D2s, had this made out of uh, metal, and other ones had wooden ones. So huh. uh, this airplane that, that that we've depicted, this this color scheme, is uh, that's appropriate for this one, which is as you must have mentioned already. Nope. Yeah, Ozzie's this is airplane. Oswald Bolke's airplane. Can these come out now? Yeah, well, if you're ready to fly, yeah. Pretty cool. Unbelievable. I don't know if the rest of my squadron is going to be up there waiting for me, but this will be a trip down memory lane for me. Alrighty, let me get the camera going here. We are recording. Let me stick some air plugs in and uh, I'll be right back with you. Okay, got my earplugs in, and uh, let me stick on this helmet cam. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we'll try it. I'll put the helmet uh, on uh, over the top. Well, that's not going to work. What am I thinking? Maybe. Yeah, that works. A little bit of a hopefully that's going to hold. I've broken my goggles. Here we go. Let me put some 
remote. I haven't done this part in a long time, you know. Huh? I haven't done this part in a long time. <laughs> I Got some be able to get it started. water in the radiator. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just go up for 25 out. minutes max. If the engine quits, I just go to emergency. Yeah. Yeah. All right, remember we got to squirt the grease into the grease fitting. Sure, if we can see how these seat belts go together, but okay, I should hold them in. No brakes. That's the uh, control lock. There's the throttle right here. In case this cable breaks, there's an emergency one here that grabs, and you got the throttle. You've got the altimeter over here. Spark is retarded. Switch is off. Got a booster mag here for starting. Got the air pump. And all of these are down. Switches are off, Dermot. Say again? Switch is off. Uh, switch is off and the... Uh, Spark's retarded. Spark's retarded and the whole switch is out, actually. So how uh, the, uh, the grease fitting, I get uh, just like a half or a full? Just till it's tight. Just till it's tight, okay. You want some air pressure? Yep. Pull it through that. I don't know if you can see the gauge up there, but open up a little bit of air. Okay, you ready? Okay, it's cracked. I mean, uh, switch is on. Throttle's cracked. Switch is hot. Okay, Give it a to, shot. Ready to swing hey, Bevin. Uh, how, how you been? Ready to swing the turn, turn the booster? Yep. Booster mate? Okay. So three, two, one, and then spin the booster. Okay. Three, two, one. 